put easier together the competences, diplomatic competences of our member states and to work together, 27 sovereign states are working closer together to project our interests and values in the world and to articulate better with our partners and friends like Azerbaijan. The European Union has also greatly strengthened its voice in diplomatic, security, defence, trade and development issues with the creation of a European External Action Service. Our delegations abroad now represent the European Union and hold the permanent European Union presidency which enhances continuity and coherence. We have also adapted to the new geopolitical realities with the 2004 and 2007 enlargements encompassing countries from Central and Eastern Europe, the European Union found itself with many new neighbours, such as Azerbaijan, with different history, but also with ambitions and expectations that are very similar to those of the European Member States. The European Union's response to this new geopolitical environment was the launching of the European Neighbourhood Policy, which aims at promoting a true partnership with our neighbours to consolidate stability and prosperity. Now, what does this mean for the European Union's relations with Azerbaijan? First and foremost, it means that as with our Eastern partners, we seek to engage with Azerbaijan in a more targeted way, beyond classical diplomacy and development assistance, to focus on shared programs for reform and modernization. Let me start with this policy framework. The policy framework is the Azerbaijan European Union Action Plan, agreed in 2006. This plan, along with the Eastern Partnership Prague Declaration three years later, sets out a comprehensive vision for the future. The ambition is to promote nothing less than the political association and economic integration of Azerbaijan with the European Union. So it is, in fact, a very ambitious program. And in order to achieve these objectives, this and partnership policy framework focuses on four specific areas. These are, first, deepening bilateral relations through new bilateral association agreements. These agreements are meant to bring our cooperation to a higher level by intensifying our joint work in a broad range of areas, including energy, environment and education. And since I'm in this prestigious education institution, Baku University, let me tell you that this was one of the points that yesterday, in my very fruitful, friendly, open consultations with President Aliyev, he himself was mentioned in great emphasis. As you know, President Aliyev gives a great importance to education as a way of the modernization of your country, and the European Union is proud to be accepted as an important partner in that matter as well. In July last year, the negotiations on an association agreement with Azerbaijan were opened here in Baku. These negotiations are continuing in great intensity, covering all relevant areas in the political sphere, as well as in the economic and technical sectors. Second, there is the prospect of strengthening trade and investment by establishing deep and comprehensive free trade area. This is very ambitious as it implies the gradual opening of the European Union's internal markets to our partners. However, for this vision to become a reality, Azerbaijan will have to join the WTO first. We will have to invest more time and effort to achieve this goal, but rest assured the European Union is ready to support Azerbaijan in this endeavor. Third, Promoting mobility of citizens and visa liberalization as a long-term goal is also an important objective of this and partnership. This will be of great value as greater mobility will increase direct contacts among people. We expect that in the coming months, the European Union and Azerbaijan will be able to open negotiations on a visa facilitation agreement in parallel with negotiations on a readmission agreement. And since I'm a University, I think it's important to underline that this is very important for professors but also for students. Experience shows that once these agreements are in force, students are among the first to seize the new opportunities that open up for exchanges. And this I want to tell to you and to your students as well. 
that we would like to see more contacts in the field of education and more students of Azerbaijan also in the European Union. The fourth and final focus of the Eastern Partnership is to strengthen energy security through cooperation to ensure long-term stable and secure energy supply and transit. Azerbaijan has a central role to play here, being both a producer and a transit country. The beauty of our energy cooperation is that it is for the benefit of both parties. Indeed, it is as important for Azerbaijan to diversify its export markets as it is for Europe to diversify its energy supplies. Our energy cooperation is advancing rapidly. In 2006, I signed a memorandum of understanding on a strategic partnership in the field of energy. Yesterday, with President Aliyev, I signed a declaration underlining our commitment to support the establishment of a source and gas corridor, providing European markets and consumers with gas from Azerbaijan. And in my very intense and open, friendly consultations with President Aliyev, I understood how committed politically and personally he is to this project. In addition to strengthening bilateral relations, the Eastern Partnership introduces a stronger concept of multilateral cooperation with a view to encouraging links among partner countries themselves. Contacts and discussions between parliaments have also provided a platform for contacts between civil society as part of this Eastern Partnership. For its part, the EU is helping by offering technical and financial assistance, transfer of know-how and expertise, participation in new programs and other policy instruments. We have been providing technical and financial assistance to Azerbaijan since the 90s and in recent years. Uh, this has focused on strategic sectors such as energy and the justice sector. Azerbaijan is also one of the first among our partners to use twinning assistance. This allows experts from the administrations of EU member states to provide on-the-job training for Azerbaijan civil servants in their own environment. This transfer of know-how has already proven extremely successful during European Union enlargements and we expect it to be of great value for Azerbaijan as well. With the Eastern Partnership, the EU has established an ambitious agenda for deepening relations with the six Eastern partners, both bilaterally and as a group. And I would like to underline this regional dimension as this is paramount for success. European experience shows that we cannot prosper if our neighbors don't. And that progress is much more solid and sustainable if we achieve it together. My sincere wish would be that this experience could also inspire the countries in South and Caucasus. We all know that a country can only realize its full potential if it is secure, stable, at peace with its neighbors. This is not yet the case in the region. Nagorno-Karabakh, you've mentioned it, Mr. Rector, is still a serious impediment to peace and stability. I share the pain of all people who have been and still are affected by this conflict. Europe has also been through our times, as I mentioned earlier, and we are able to understand the suffering. This conflict is not forgotten, I can assure you of that, and we work, sometimes it's quickly, to help achieve a lasting and peaceful resolution. Yesterday I also mentioned this issue in my conversations with President Aliyev, and of course the European Union supports fully the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and here the principles agreed and the efforts made by the Minsk OSC group and we stand ready to support not only politically but also in terms of assistance for um, some of the rehabilitation in case a settlement is reached. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's globalized world we need to work together to deal with challenges that we all face interdependent economies, environmental disasters that refuse to respect borders, terrorist groups that use the internet to recruit members. These are just a few examples that are as relevant in Spain or Germany, or other European countries as here in Azerbaijan. Working together with the European Union on these challenges will make both the European Union and Azerbaijan stronger. By deepening the links between the European institutions, the Member States 
and Azerbaijan. We are encouraging a transformational effect that will have a political impact on both sides. Real and tangible progress will boost confidence and encourage border, political and economic reforms. Democracy, rule of law, freedom of speech are important values that are deeply enshrined in the concept of the European Union. They are part of the answer for achieving long-term stability and prosperity. The European Union is a partner you can count on this endeavor. European history, of which Azerbaijan is also a part, shows that when we are confident and determined, all challenges can be overcome. Confidence and determination are the key words to take our partnership forward. For, as the great Azeri poet and philosopher Nizami Ganyavi has said, and I quote, in the hour of adversity, be not without hope, for crystal rain falls from black clouds. I thank you for your attention.